Hello. Today we're diving into the captivating world of macro photography at night. This is where the magic happens, where small subjects become larger than life, and the night unveils its hidden treasures. My name is Stuart Wood, I'm a macro photographer from the UK and I'm excited to share this journey with you. Macro photography can be done at any time of the day. Many macro photographers go out in the midday sun, chasing the insects around, trying to get a good shot of them. Some good advice would be to go out early in the mornings when it's cold. Insects are cold-blooded organisms, which means their body temperature is regulated by the temperature of their environment. When it gets cold, the metabolic process of the insects slows down, leading to a decrease in their overall activity and movement. This is a great time to photograph insects as they are still, and in most cases, they are asleep and won't move. No longer will you be chasing around after the insects. Early morning macro photography is a great time to photograph insects. However, I'm a flash user. This means there is also another time of day that we can go out and photograph insects. This is macro photography at night time. First of all, let's talk about the gear and the settings you will need for nighttime insect macro photography. For this setup, I'm using the Olympus EM1 Mark II. I use the Olympus 60mm f2.8 for my macro work with the Olympus gear. I also use the 50mm Laura lens for the Micro Four Thirds system. That means on this particular system, which is a micro four third system, I'm getting a four times magnification that is equivalent to a full frame camera. On my full frame camera, which is the EOS R, I use the 100mm f2.8 macro lens from Laura. For light, I'm using the Godox V350O. This is an absolutely fantastic flash, particularly if you're into focus stacking. The flash is crucial because it helps me capture the intricate details of the creature that might otherwise go unnoticed in the darkness. Good light is always necessary for macro photography. To achieve this, I'm using the Cygnus Tech Diffuser. This diffuser creates a great looking soft light for your images. This is an absolutely fantastic diffuser and I highly recommend it if you are into insect macro photography. To focus, I always focus on the eyes. If I'm stacking, I will focus just in front of where I want the stack to start and then continue the focus stack all the way through to the back where I want it to end. To focus, I'll move my camera forward and backwards or if it's on a tripod, I will use the focusing ring. One of the main reasons I love to come out at night time for my insect macro photography is because the insects are asleep. And even if they wake up, because of the low temperatures, they don't move. This gives us a great opportunity to photograph them. Although the settings I use for nighttime macro photography are almost identical to the ones I use in the daytime, there are some subtle differences. Because of the lack of ambient light, we can get away with a lower shutter speed. The light from the flash is what actually freezes the action. So the lower the flash power is, the higher your effective shutter speed will be when you're doing photography at nighttime. So if you are dealing with a moving subject like a moth, you can decrease the power on your flash Adjust your shutter speed and your f-stop and your ISO to compensate for the lower power on your flash and that will freeze the action in place. In most cases at night time if you're not focus stacking then a setting of TTL on your flash will be more than adequate. TTL is through the lens metering with your flash. It gives off a pre-flash to meter the camera and then gives off the flash power that is needed for that shot. Sometimes the pre-flash can spook your insects. If you find this, then switch to manual and dialing a power that is satisfying to you. At night time, I usually start with a shutter speed of around 1 50th of a second. My f-stop is usually around f8 to f10 for a single shot, and the ISO is as low as possible. On this particular camera, it's at 200, but I will bump it higher if I need to, to get a correct exposure. Now, if you intend on focus stacking, what you want to do is take advantage of your sharpest f-stop on the lens. But what is important is your flash power and your white balance. 
you want to set those manually because you don't want the camera to adjust it between shots. So set your flash power to whatever is needed for the exposure and set your white balance to anything but auto. You don't want auto because it will adjust the colours in each frame. Because I'm using the Cygnus Tech Diffuser, it's at 4800 Kelvin. All we gotta do then is adjust our ISO to get the correct exposure. Let's talk about some of the pros and some of the cons into nighttime macro photography. Being as the insects are asleep, we have time to prepare our shots. Playing with composition and light, we have time to get the image in a way that we want. And while we're doing this, the insect will not fly away. Of course, there are nocturnal insects like moths and such. These insects will be less cooperative than their daytime counterparts. One of the benefits of nighttime macro photography is how peaceful it is. There's nobody about. There's no walkers walking around, there's no dog walkers to disturb you or your subject. You can just concentrate on getting the shot you want. One way that macro photographers get maximum depth of field is by focus stacking. Taking multiple shots at different focus points and then blending those images together in post software to get one incredibly detailed image. This is very easy to accomplish at night because again, the insects are asleep and they don't move. And to be able to get a successful stack, your subject cannot move. So photographing at night is a perfect time to get those high resolution image stacks. At night and in early mornings, your entire scene can get covered in dew. This makes for a great subject alone or combined with an insect can create some very artistic shots. Take a look at this shot of a damselfly with a daisy in the background refracting in the water drops. You can get very, very creative with dew drops. And I would not like to try that shot in the middle of the daytime. Nighttime macro photography is not just for flash users. You can use the natural light in very creative ways. Have a look at this example of a damselfly silhouetted against the morning sun. Play around with light and play around with composition because again, at night, you've got plenty of time to play around while the insects are asleep. One macro photography technique I wish to briefly talk about is UV-IVF, ultraviolet induced visible fluorescence photography. Taking a UV torch like this Convoy S2 Plus, we can create some otherworldly images. You can see in these images the way that the scenes fluoresce the UV light. This type of photography is way too complicated for me to cover in this video. However, nighttime, as you guessed it, is probably the best time to do that type of photography. While it is incredibly rewarding, nighttime macro photography does come with its challenges. Working in low light might make achieving focus very difficult. You may need to learn to switch off your autofocus and go manual. Also, you might need to increase your ISO, which can, in turn, increase the noise and grain in your images. Modern denoise software helps a lot with these images to get rid of that noise and grain that is unwanted. If you are a natural light macro photographer, then the window for capturing optimal light is very narrow as the light changes rapidly during the twilight hours. This means you need to be well prepared and rapid on your feet to make the most of your shots. As the temperature falls, you may need extra layers of clothing. The temperature here in the UK can fall as low as eight degrees Celsius, and that's during the summer months. Extra clothes is recommended, wrap up and stay warm. Nighttime macro photography may need specialist gear like macro lenses with low light capabilities or external lighting. Investing in this gear may be costly, but is necessary to achieve the results that you want. Because of the low dew point at night and the formation of the dew, some or all of your gear may get wet. Make sure you dry it off when you get back home. One issue you will find with nighttime macro photography is the change of subject. Although you can find damselflies and dragonflies roosting in the grass and in the trees, some subjects you will not be able to find, like bees and ants they will be asleep in their nests.
Patience is your best friend when it comes to nighttime macro photography. Waiting for the perfect lighting conditions or for your subject to cooperate can lead to truly remarkable macro photography shots. Since autofocus can struggle in low light conditions, mastering manual focus is a must. Practice focusing on various subjects in different lighting conditions to become more confident and efficient. Don't be afraid to experiment with your camera settings. Try different apertures, shutter speeds and ISOs to find a nice balance between a pleasing image and a nice balance of noise and grain. Black backgrounds, you either love them or you hate them. Black backgrounds are created by the inverse square law. The power from your flash that's hitting your subject physically can't light up the background. In these times, when you don't want a black background, you want a nice colourful background like in these examples. And sometimes, you can't get the natural foliage into shot. This is where colourful background cards come in handy. Print them out, pop them into the back of your subject and you'll have a nice bright background for your colourful macro shots. They can create an interesting background and can change the mood of your shots from bright and cheerful to dark and moody. Can I ask you a question? What is the number one rule when photographing wildlife? That's right, the subject's welfare must be top priority. You wouldn't go out and capture and kill a deer so you could get a nice deer shot for your portfolio. So why would you do it with insects? Let's talk about ethics in macro photography. The number one rule for an ethical approach in macro photography is you must never harm or kill your subject. The most extreme forms, apart from killing them, of harming subjects is used when staging wildlife photos, where subjects are wired, glued or frozen to manipulate their pose. Using an ice spray to freeze or slow down the subject is generally considered unethical within the macro photography community. Same as placing subjects into a fridge or a freezer, just don't do it. And it is not necessary to get good shots of insects. Don't go trampling through the undergrowth or stamping on flowers just to get to a subject that you want to photograph. Try to keep the environment as intact as possible. You want to minimise the amount of disturbance you do when you're out in the field. Let's talk about litter. Litter should not be left anywhere in the environment that you are photographing your insects. And if you do encounter someone else's litter, do your good deed for the day and take it with you and put it in a bin. I will occasionally and carefully move a subject into a more photogenic environment. This I will only do when I am absolutely sure I am not harming or disturbing the subject. Two reasons I would do it. One, it's just I can't get the shot that I want in my head, or I physically can't get the camera into position, such as behind me there's a lake and I can't get the camera into the lake to get a picture, so I will move a subject in that case. Again, this is okay so long as you know your subject, you treat them with respect and you don't harm them, and of course you place them back where you found them. The last point I want to talk about is learn to stop. No matter whether you've got an image or not, learn to realise when the subject is stressed out. This is something I preach in my studio with my jumping spiders. Recognise when the subject has had enough and when it is stressed out and has had enough of your photographing them, leave them alone, leave them be, put them back where you found them and move on to the next subject. Nighttime macro photography opens up a world of possibilities and challenges. From the beautiful ambient light to the delicate nocturnal subjects. The rewards are well worth the effort. But remember, it's all about embracing the darkness and letting your creativity shine. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit that like button and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And until next time, keep capturing the beauty of macro through your lens.